This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. So imagine creating your ideal city, a perfect place to take a stroll or perhaps eat a meal with a view. The Bay Area is home to some spectacular waterfront destinations. San Francisco's Embarcadero or Oakland's Jack London Square may first come to mind. But one city in Contra Costa County has taken note. Martinez is now trying to redevelop its quiet marina. Wilson Walker on the city's big plans and what it might mean for those living there. A restaurant will have a fully remastered harbor master office. Uh, we'll have an updated bait shop. We'll have an environmental center and conference center uh, and a cafe. And so our looking through the glare on her laptop, Mayor Brianne Zorn can see a future. The city of Martinez has talked about for a long time now, a refurbished marina and improved waterfront and better access to the wildlife refuge and parkland that surrounds all of it. Um, and it's got some ideas about, you know, what what it is that we're envisioning this area to look like. The city is now finalizing a blueprint for approval by the state and the project would by necessity be transformative. What the plan dictates is that we actually have to raise this whole area by several feet and they don't specify how we're going to do that. They just know that due to projections from sea level rise, building at this elevation is uh, not in our best interest. So this is Kush. We found her at two months old down here at the Martinez Marina in the dumpster. Just as the Martinez waterfront appears headed for a transition, it is currently home to a collection of people who find themselves in between places. I ended up losing my job at Amazon. Ended up trying to do side work as a mechanic and it it's just been hard since then. I've been out here since December. Richard was born and raised in Contra Costa County. He is among those now staying here until he can find work and another place to live. Sometimes on the weekends we come out here and do barbecue with, with each other and try to scrounge up our money to buy some food for each other. And it's a beautiful place. I, I agree with developing out here. Yes, I am worried about losing my spot, but Honestly, it's very underestimated out here. The city says it's working with the county on providing assistance for those living here, but it is not like construction is imminent. The improvements and any development would only come after massive infrastructure upgrades, the kind of work that is going to take time and a lot of money, just the first piece of which has been secured. First step is the fishing pier. Second step is the eastern seawall and uh, the outer uh, the outer sheet pile wall um, around the marina. Now, what's driving the city's additional room to maneuver on the waterfront is actually a change in how they dredge the Carquinez Strait for years. They just vacuumed up all that material and dumped it into holding ponds here. They stopped doing that a couple years ago, and that means Martinez effectively gets this land back. They can clean it up and take what is a bit of a wasteland and incorporate it into the more beautiful elements of the waterfront here. The development, so to speak, wouldn't be very large. It would be more of a hub in the middle of this larger improved area with hopefully larger things down the road. We are one of the cities along the Carquina Strait that is being proposed for ferry service, right? That connects us to the other cities in the region and to the greater San Francisco Bay Area by boat. We're connected uh, by rail. Uh, we could also be connected by BART. There are all of these opportunities for us to be to be connected to the region. And it is an Martinez ambitious project that hopes to better connect Martinez to the water and its past glory as a regional hub. It will take many years and many rounds of state and federal funding, but it all starts with a plan. As Wilson mentioned, at this point, it is all still a plan, with the city still studying options and gathering public input. A potential solution to Berkeley's student housing crisis involves building up rather than out. So the Planning Commission just approved raising the maximum building height by 85 feet for certain streets south of campus. That would allow for buildings up to 12 stories if they include affordable housing. And it's going to make it possible for over 2,500 new units to be built on the south side. That's significant. 
it's a leap of faith and it's a big jump. That's built a truly affordable housing and, and we're, we're not doing that. We're not investing in public housing, social housing or cooperative housing. The city council will likely vote on the proposal this fall. Another plan that's faced even stauncher criticism is the university's plan to develop the historic People's Park. So that project had actually broken ground, then stalled after opponents filed a lawsuit. Governor Newsom, however, just signed a bill that is expected to get the project rolling again unless the state Supreme steps in Supreme Court. Another bill heading to Governor Newsom's desk would legalize the use of magic mushrooms and other natural psychedelics for those 21 and older. So San Francisco Senator Scott Weiner has been the one pushing for it. Research showing the drugs can help with depression, PTSD, anxiety, even some substance abuse problems. But others say they can also have potentially dangerous side effects like paranoia and erratic behavior. The law would go into effect in 2025 if Governor Newsom signs off. Oregon and Colorado have already passed similar measures. This is the Volkswagen Red and Gold Report. It's official. Oh, yes. Officially, Nick Bosa signed his new five-year contract. Have you heard? Happened this morning that makes him the highest paid defensive player in NFL history. Matt Lively joining us now with the latest on tonight's Red and Gold Report. So what you got? What, what stuff do you have? Everyone's excited. Right. Nick he Bosa signed it. He's in. Back. This was nerve-wracking, too, because yeah. it came right down to the wire right before the season. But everyone in that locker room is happy. George Kittle said he's more intimidating and the team is more intimidating when he's on the field. He also mentioned uh, his quads and biceps. Okay. <laughs> Bosa pronounced himself ready to go after a couple of practices. He says he can play as many snaps as the coaching staff allows him to do on Sunday and has a little extra spring in his step thanks to that one new $170 million contract. I haven't played yet, but I, I'm definitely thinking that it's going to be a weight off my shoulders and just be free out there and play for one reason and to win games. The 49ers will head to Pittsburgh for the first time since 2015. These two teams meet every four years, so not much of a rivalry. But we did get some bulletin board material. Steelers cornerback Patrick Peterson guaranteed an interception against Brock Purdy on Sunday and thinks there will be moments when he can tell what play the 49ers are running. I don't really know what to say about that. I mean, he's, he's a good player. When I get my pick Sunday, we'll talk about it. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> it's the competitive nature, I guess, of football, so... We'll see. Jules, this is a little bit awkward. When Purdy, the Arizona High School Player of the Year, went to a Cardinals game, he got to meet Peterson in person. That's them. And Peterson's the one talking all that smack. smack. So, you know, don't meet your heroes, I guess. <laughs> I feel like Brock Purdy's not affected by it, though. He's just no. kind of like he's so innocent and nice. He's just out there to play the game. He's really calm, cool, and collected. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So far. Interesting. <laughs> okay, thanks, Matt. If you walk through San Francisco's Botanical Gardens in the coming days, the gift of music awaits you, hidden behind the trees and shrubbery. It is the eighth annual Flower Piano event featuring 12 grand pianos spread through the gardens. There will be a mix of scheduled performances and free time for anyone to sit right down and begin playing. So some are right there when you walk in on the great meadow. Others are tucked away in the redwoods. Uh, it's fun to wander around. The garden expects 60,000 people to walk the gardens the next five days. And it says if you like a festival-esque party scene, come on the weekend. If you prefer a bit of more peace and quiet, well, then come during the week. All right, here is a beautiful look at Mount Diablo. Look at that, the highest point in Contra Costa County, offering views and sunsets in the East Bay. And now the latest place where couples can say, I do. I now pronounce you <laughs> husband and wife. <laughs> And the California Parks Department has begun offering destination weddings on top of the mountain, right at the summit, nearly 4,000 feet above sea level. It can be a magical moment. Just be prepared for what you're getting yourself into. When I went to the courthouse, they said, we have destination wedding. <laughs> so I said, oh, top of the summit? I didn't know it was this far up, but it's okay. <laughs> So you get up here, we you made it. Like, yeah, what, what I'm like, oh Lord, I'm, it's beautiful. I'm thinking about how we gonna make it down. 
in your new car. Okay, if you want to be the next couple to tie the knot up there, contact the county clerk's office and congratulations to them. They made it down okay, and she said yes. All right, thanks for watching. The news continues at 8 on Pix Plus or 44 Cable 12. We'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. Have an amazing weekend. Thanks for watching.